cruises high above the Atlantic Ocean on its way to Egypt. 217 people are on board. Just half an hour after takeoff, disaster strikes. The pilot and co-pilot struggle desperately for control of their aircraft. The lives of all on board will depend on these two pilots and what they do about this dive towards the ocean. The John F. Kennedy International Airport outside New York City is one of the busiest airports in the world. In 1999, nearly 32 million passengers fly in and out. More than 340,000 flights take off and land. Egypt Air Flight 990 is destined to be one of the most controversial ever to leave this airport. The fate of this flight challenges the strength of an international friendship between two allies and uncovers a hidden mechanical flaw in one of the world's most popular airliners. The FBI will become involved. We reviewed surveillance tapes to, in, to, to indicate whether or not anything unusual was loaded on that plane. Investigators in two countries developed two different theories. Was this a tragic accident or a terrible crime? Just after 1 a.m. on October the 31st, 1999, the 217 people on board Egypt Air Flight 990 are waiting for takeoff. The flight's command captain is Captain Ahmed Al Habashi. He's been with Egypt Air for 36 years. The command first officer is 36-year-old Adel Anwar. He switched duty with another co-pilot so he could return home in time for his wedding. Soon be a married man. Congratulations, Adele. Thank you very much. The airline's chief pilot for the Boeing 767, Captain Hatem Rushdie, joins them in the cockpit. At 20 past one in the morning, First Officer Adel Anwar is going through his takeoff clearance with air traffic control. You fly the gateway climb, climbing to 5,000. Following gateway, clear for takeoff, runway 22 right, Egypt Air 990 heavy. Cabin crew advised. In the name of God, the merciful, the compassionate. Cabin crew, take off position. After an everyday blessing, the co-pilot assists the takeoff. For safety, both pilots push the throttles. On a flight of 10 hours, it's standard practice at Egypt Air to provide a relief crew to share the flying duties. The command crew takes off and lands. The relief crew flies the middle portion. Tonight, Captain Rauf Nur al Din and First Officer Gamil El Batuti are the relief crew. They will take over after the first three or four hours and fly the plane until shortly before Cairo. V1, rotate. Positive rate of climb, both sides. 1000. Egypt Air 990 Heavy, contact. Departure now, 125.7. 1257. Bye. A large number of passengers are senior citizens from the United States looking forward to touring the wonders of ancient Egypt. Uh, my dad and Ginny were married in 1998 on October 23rd. And to celebrate their first anniversary, they decided to take a trip to Egypt. Anita Child's parents are retired and on their way to Egypt as well. They always had great time on these tours. They traveled frequently and so it was a pleasure trip they were looking forward to seeing the holy land especially maureen sacratini and her brother john simmermeyer enjoyed the fact that their parents loved to travel they had been particularly fond of a program known as elder hostel and this particular vacation trip uh, to visit the pyramids and the other um, uh, historical uh, sites in Egypt was an elder hostel trip. There are 14 of Egypt Air's experienced crew operating the flight. 
There are also 33 Egyptian military officers and pilots on board, returning after training with the American Armed Forces. Gamil El Batuti used to be an Egyptian Air Force flight instructor. He's now one of the oldest first officers at Egypt Air. He's so much older than the other co-pilots that out of respect they call him Captain. But some at Egypt Air think that Captain El Batuti has been coasting too long on the favors of old friends. Just over 20 minutes after takeoff, El Batuti is about to leave his seat. Former National Transportation Safety Board investigator Greg Phillips became an expert on the events of this flight. The relief first officer who would have been expected to come to the cockpit somewhere during the later part of the flight, uh, halfway or wherever he was comfortable, wherever the normal change would have been, came into the cockpit about 20 minutes after takeoff. Hello, Jimmy. How are you? How do you, sir? What's new? I, uh, I slept, I swear. Just wait. Let me tell you something. I'm not going to sleep at all. I might come sit for two hours but and then... I, I, I slept. I, I slept. You mean you're not going to get up? You will get up. Go and take some rest and come back. You should have told me this. You should have told me this, Captain Gamal. You should have said, Adele... Did I even see you? I will work first. Just leave me a message. The younger first officer seems surprised that El Batuti wants to replace him so early in the flight. I'm not sleeping. So you take your time sleeping, and, uh, and when you wake up, whenever you wake up, you come back, Captain, okay? I'll come either way. Captain. Come and work the last few hours, and that's all? It's not like that. That's not the point. Look, if you want to sit here, there's no problem. I'll come back to you. I'll go get something to eat and come back, all right? Fine, fine. Look here. Why don't you go... Why don't they bring your dinner to you here, and then I'll go sleep, okay? That's good. Okay, with your permission, Captain. And with that, El Batuti leaves to get his meal. First Officer Anwar concedes and is ready to hand over to El Batuti. Normally, this is the most relaxed, easy part of a long flight for pilots and passengers alike. The highly automated aircraft systems will take care of the flying for several hours. It's very unusual for an airplane flying over the Atlantic at nighttime to encounter any kind of difficulties. We normally uh, expect accidents to happen in approach or landing or near airports, and very seldom do we get anything out over the ocean in the middle of the night. Excuse me, Jimmy, while I take a quick trip to the toilet. Go ahead, please. Before it gets crowded, while they're still eating, I'll be back to you. Before the captain returns, disaster will strike Egypt Air Flight 990. The fate of everyone on board will be in the hands of the co-pilot, the man who shouldn't be here in the first place. Boeing 767 bound for Cairo, Egypt Air's Flight 990 appears to be cruising smoothly over the Atlantic. The relief first officer, Gamil El Batuti, is alone in the cockpit while the captain has gone to the washroom. But then the plane dips, plunging down. The nose pitches down, creating zero G, weightlessness, throughout the aircraft. This airplane basically started at one G, which is what we'd expect for level cruise flight. As you push the nose down, as if you would be cresting the top of a hill in a car at a high speed that drops away, you'd feel the, the airplane fall away from you, and you would start to feel a little light in the seat, and as the dive progressed, you would, you would feel a little bit lighter yet. I rely on God. Whatever the first officer is intending, he says nothing except this phrase again and again. Adele. Captain El Habashi fights the disorientation of zero gravity, desperately trying to return to the cockpit. An American journalist living in France studied this flight extensively. 16 seconds after the dive began, when the airplane had gone into zero G and into negative G and was at an extreme angle, the captain somehow made.